10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. You already know what time it is. Reviveisalive.com. Once again, Reviveisalive.com. Tune in. Revive is alive. Welcome to Revive. It's about that time. Welcome to Revive. It's about that time. All I need is my you know what time it is. Open up your ears. You know what time it is. Open up your mind. It's about that time. It's your girl POC. Hey! It's your girl POC. Hey! Proof of consciousness. Proof of consciousness. You know what time it is. Open up your ears. time it is man it's me your girl poc host for a vibe man turn the radios up each and every sunday morning we got that good sunday morning talk radio for you guys from 11 a.m to 1 p.m man i don't think you guys heard me i said turn your radios up man it's sunday morning i need y'all to go ahead and wake up wake up wake up with me your girl poc good morning, good morning. to you, to you. The, birds. the birds are chirping good morning Good morning, good morning, good morning. Like I said, man, wake up. We trying to turn you guys up on this Sunday morning, man. Like I said, today is August 5th, 2018, man. We are in the month of August already, people, man. It is the eighth month of the year, man. The year is not waiting for us. Time is not waiting for us, man. I want to know how you guys are finishing this year strong, man. Revive Radio is alive. Once again, Revive Radio is alive. You're tuning in to Revive Radio right now. Spread the word, spread the message at reviveisalive.com. It's the place where you can find us once again. Again, that is Revive is Alive.com. It's a place where you can find us. And don't forget to follow us Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at Revive underscore POC. Once again, that's Revive underscore POC on all social networks. And for, don't forget to subscribe, subscribe, subscribe to our Revive YouTube channel, man. Definitely don't forget to subscribe to that Revive YouTube channel. It's going to come in handy in September. Once again, it's going to come very, very, very in handy come September. We got a lot of things we're doing here at Revive Radio, man, and we need you to be a part of that and all you gotta do is subscribe to that youtube channel and don't forget to subscribe to that newsletter as always man i'm pushing it every time we get on these airways subscribe 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 to that revive youtube channel and that newsletter man everything is going to be in that newsletter how you guys can stay locked with us here revive everything we have coming up all the dates you need to save yes i said it all the dates you need to save man that newsletter is coming really shortly it's going to be coming out next week with all the information you need to know but yes man save the date save the date save the date save the date september 8th once again that is september 8th 2018 mark that on your calendar right now as revive day once again september 8th 2018 that is revive day we will be reviving the people revive rhythm and reasoning volume 2-3 is coming september 8th man i know we promised you guys six months strong we were supposed to be finished in the year six months strong but because we're trying to do something so big so amazing for you guys it had to it had to be compatible all into this one month of September so I really need you guys to go ahead and save that date when I'm trying to tell you it's going to be revive day it is definitely revive day so definitely mark your calendars we got something really big for you guys we're going to be going it's going to actually be going down we'll be partnering with let's do it grow um it's going to be really really exciting I'm 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 really I'm really excited. I'm pumped up for this one, y'all, because this is going to be a big one. This is really going to be really big for the city of Philadelphia and also Revive Radio. And I'm sorry, it's life. <laughs> I apologize. Life do grow farm. Once again, life do grow farm. I don't know where I life do it grow. I don't know where I got that from. But yes, life do grow farm, September 8th going down man shout out to your girl tab money russell brand man always holding it down always having revive back because this is going to be a really big one so just know um just save the day it's going to be revive day man but we got a jam-packed show for you guys today man i'm really excited to be speaking with both of our guests today but today is going to be a big day for one of our guests and myself we are actually going to be doing and we're actually going to be interviewing each other today 
I'm going to be interviewing her today on Revive Radio around 11.20, so I need you guys to stay tuned. It's going to be DeJanae White. She's from Win Her Circle. I'm really excited because I won this week. I'm winning this week. According to DeJanae, I am the winner. I'm the win her of the week. So I'm really excited. So I'm going to be interviewing uh, uh, Miss White today around 11.20. So definitely tune in so you can get to know everything about Win Her Circle, everything you need to know, how you can be a part of Win Her Circle, how you can join in, how you can volunteer, whatever you need to do, because they're doing some amazing things for young ladies um, between the ages of 17 and 23. And we all know how crazy those ages were for us. If you have already experienced it between 17 and 23, how literally it can be a roller coaster. So we have someone, you know, who's putting her life, her life, you know, experiences on the line to teach and mold different young women who are going through similar situations or, you know, just molding women so they don't even have to go through the same situation. So definitely stay locked to Revive Radio so you can hear from Dijanae White um, going down around 1120, win her circle. We also have another amazing guest um, coming around 1230 which is going to be Courtney Gardner from the Ascendant, the Art of Ascending. So I'm really excited to be say, uh, speaking with her as well because when it comes to art, we really try to keep art alive here on Revive Radio, man. We definitely try to keep art alive because so many people um, are pushing money into technology, STEM, and everything like that and not saying that STEM is not important. Shout out to everybody who's participating in STEM. But when it comes to art and when it comes to talent, when it comes to passion, man, we have to keep that alive because a lot of people are creators and a lot of creators creators are getting stepped on because they're not getting people to back them in their creativity so that's what we try to do here on revive so man if you are trying to be a guest on revive radio if you are an artist entrepreneur a startup business you know what i mean a vocalist a a, a, a seamstress you do it all man we definitely try to highlight it all here on revive radio so definitely hit us up at revive.poc at gmail.com once again that's revive.poc at gmail.com we're going to go to a quick commercial break rather than this quick commercial break man i got some trending topics i want to go over with you and don't forget to stay locked we got your boy brax from the left side of politics coming through as well man each and every second and fourth sunday of the month they coming through to bless us man with some actual factual so definitely stay locked you know you want you don't want to miss this one because we're talking everything from Le- lebron james i promise school down to donald trump calling people stupid and dumb man on twitter on twitter who's the dumb one really like really who's the dumb one but we're gonna go ahead and go to this commercial break we're gonna get into that later with your boy Brax from the left side of politics. It's me, your girl, POC. Turn your radios up. Spread the word. Spread the message. We are live right now. Reviveisalive.com. Are you an entrepreneur? Are you a startup business? Are you a local business? Are you an artist? Are you looking for someone to distribute your content? Revive Radio is the place to be. Come advertise with us at Revive Radio right now. You can find that advertising page at reviveisalive.com. Once again, reviveisalive.com. Advertise with Revive. We are reaching thousands of millennials all across the world. And once again, reviveisalive.com is where you can find that information. Did you know only 25% of college students eat the recommended daily amount of fruits and vegetables? A limited intake of fruits and vegetables has been linked to chronic diseases such as diabetes, obesity, and heart disease. The typical freshman gains over four pounds their first term on campus. The habits college students form today will carry into their adult life.
It's easy to take a day for granted. You and your family are connected by routine, and you stick to it. But what if disaster strikes without warning? What if the life as you know it has completely turned on its head? What if your day's routine is disrupted and you can't reach your family? Have you planned for that? Before disaster turns your family's world upside down, it's up to you to be ready. Get a kit. Make a plan. Be informed. Today, learn how at www.ready.gov. Brought to you by the Federal Emergency Management Agency and the Ad Council. host of Revive. We are back live on reviveisalive.com. Once again, that is reviveisalive.com. And don't forget, y'all can hit us up each and every time we are reviving your airways, man. That number is 215-490-9832. Once again, that number is 215-490-9832. Any questions, any comments, any opinions you may want to get off your chest, man, definitely don't be scared. Give us a call, man, each and every time we reviving your airways. That's what that number is for, man. We trying to give y'all, you know what I'm saying, some education. We trying to educate and re-educate each and every time we get on these airways but what's the conversation you know what i'm saying without another person so we definitely need y'all to call in man definitely engage with us every time we get on these airways man this platform revive radio is for you guys man we're trying to educate and re-educate and we can definitely do that by hearing your opinions and hearing your perspectives and definitely your questions your questions you know stem other conversations and definitely get our guests going and don't forget man each and every time we got our guests on they're here to answer all of your questions any questions that you may have for them that you cannot answer answer for them i mean you cannot ask them over social media or they didn't hit you they didn't necessarily hit you back in your dm or anything like that man revive radio is the place we're trying to get all your you know all your all your questions answered we're trying to definitely get all the amazing people on here that you guys are looking for that you want to hear from so definitely recommend somebody too man if you you know you know a business or organization out there that revive you know can definitely can definitely help you know expand in different ways like that please hit us up once again that is revive.com POC at gmail.com and we're always looking to expand here revive radio man each and every day like i said we're looking for videographers photographers journalists bloggers um we're always looking for a co- different co-hosts because we got some things coming down the line in september we're looking for some more co-hosts as well as a radio dj i'm really 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 looking for a radio dj man so hit me up spread that word for me man please tell them to hit me up in my dm we're going to send them an email where they can just definitely fill out a small little revive radio application so we know exactly exactly what they're all about if you serious about it you definitely will check um check out this application and fill this application out man we're really trying to do some things here and we need your help to definitely grow and expand each and every day and everybody here has talent everybody has talent everybody was put on this earth you know with some kind of talent and definitely i feel like once creators get together 
man, there's so many different things that we can definitely do. And I, we're not trying to reinvent the wheel. We're just trying to innovate the wheel here at Vibe Radio. You already know, man, what time it is. But definitely, um, I just want to encourage you guys to definitely hit us up because I know a lot of people, you know, I, I've been speaking to a lot of different people when I go into these different spaces and they're like, oh, I'm just intimidated. You guys are doing some really big things. Um, you know, I didn't know if you guys were going to accept me because I'm, I, I haven't been in media. I never did it. I just always had an aspiration. It was always a thought of mine, you know, across my mind, different things like that, man. It doesn't matter what level you're on. It doesn't matter where you are in, in, in your journey. We are here to help each other grow. So definitely when I tell you Revive is Alive, man, Revive is Alive. And if you understand the definition of Revive, the, the reason why Revive is here, this is what we're trying to do. We're trying to revive the people. We're trying to restore. So it's no problem at all, man. No problem at all. Hit me up. I am a regular human being. I am super cool. I, I, I've been told I've been super cool. I don't want to my own horn. But yes, man revive.poc at gmail.com once again that's revive.poc at gmail.com but I forgot to tell you guys earlier um, where you can find me on when her circle later today you can find me on IG it will be on IGTV um, you can go to either my page or when her circle you can check that out we actually gave them a shout out yesterday on our, our timeline so if you go to our timeline you can definitely check them out so 7 p.m. tune in to when her circle to hear about meet your girl POC and everything about revive and what we got going on, man, as if you don't tune in already, but definitely go tune in, man. We're trying to expand each and every day. Um, and also, don't forget, um, September 8th, if, I, if you didn't already hear, if you just tuned in, September 8th is Revive Day. So go ahead and save that in your calendar. Save that, save that, save that in your calendar. And don't forget, um, this week, Anaya's mission, she'll be doing her water ice tour. I told her I was going to shout it out again. So don't forget this week, Anaya, Anaya's mission here in the city of Philadelphia will be doing her water ice tour. She has a stop going down um, August 7th, August 8th, August 9th, and August 10th. So definitely hit her up. Uh, she'll be giving out free water ice throughout the city. If you go to Anaya's mission on Instagram, Facebook, or Twitter, you can see the flyer of where the stops are going to be at. The first stop on the 7th is going to be 38th in Fairmont. Ave. so definitely pull up on the seventh man it's going to be a great day it's going to be tuesday so definitely be there um because this is going to be really great once again anaya is 12 years old she's out here in the city of philadelphia doing some amazing things for her community at the age of 12 so there's no excuses people no excuses at all but i do want to just run down a little bit of our trending topics today man an ohio judge orders um to <laughs> duct tape uh, I can't even get it out because it's just outrageous. This is really, really outrageous. Um, Ohio, uh, Ohio judge, I'm sorry, Ohio judge orders to duct tape. Um, one of, I'm not even gonna call him a prisoner. Orders to tape um, a guy's mouth during his sentencing because he will not stop talking because they will not allow him to get his words out. They will not allow him to express himself. So he continued to talk while the judge was talking, and the judge ordered the officers to duct tape his mouth during his sentencing. So he sat in court with his mouth duct tape. He continued to talk, and then they put a, an extra piece of duct tape over his mouth, man. Check out that story at RevivesAlive.com under the news and press section. Also, EA Sports, NFL, Madden 2019, all of them can go to H-E double hockey stick at this point, man. If you're still supporting them, something's wrong with you. Um, honestly, truly, I do understand it's a video game, and some of you guys are hooked to these video games, but really, let's just see the bigger picture. Please open your eyes to this bigger picture when I tell you, man. So um, EA Sports took it upon themselves with no permission at all from Big Sean to bleep out Colin Kaepernick's name in the song on Madden 19, on Madden 2019 EA Sports took it upon themselves to scratch out Colin Kaepernick's name for the second year in a row for the second year in a row this is not the first time they did it last year and then they scratched out his name again this year on Big Sean's verse um and Big Bang so I think that's that's something that needs to be talked about and definitely needs to be highlighted a little bit more because the NFL like really the NFL is is really becoming a problem I mean they they have been a problem but then now they're becoming a problem that feels like their problem cannot be corrected or fixed and we are the people that have to correct and fix them if we continue to you know put our money into their pockets nothing is going to change 
It has to start with the dollar, people. I'm trying to tell you, it has to start with the dollar. I really hope, you know, Big Bank, everybody who was on that song, I really hope, you know, YG, uh, Nicki Minaj, 2 Chainz, Big Sean, they step up and speak up and say something about it because this is not cool at all. I did see, you know, um, Colin Kaepernick and YG take a picture already, and you know, and they're pr- they're um, putting out information. But, I mean, like, it needs to be directed to Madden. It needs to be directed to EA Sports. It needs to be directed to the NFL, honestly, truly. And also, last story. Um, the white team, a white team, was found not guilty after driving the getaway car in the LA gang um, murder of a black student. You can also find that on um, our news and press section on revivesalive.com. We got some news stories up there for you guys, man. Definitely go check them out. We try to give you that fubu, that news for you, by you each and every week on um, our news section and our on our website. So definitely go ahead and check that out, man. We're going to go to a quick commercial break. Right after our quick commercial break, we'll be up next with our next guest, Win Her Circle, man. Stay locked to us here at Revive Radio. Definitely spread the word, spread the message. We are live from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. each and every Sunday morning with that good Sunday morning talk. Talk radio. It's me, your girl POC. You are listening to Time For an Awakening Media, part of the Black Talk Radio Network. For podcasts or live programming, hit them up at timeforanawakening.com. Yep, yep, you know what time it is, man. It's me, your girl, POC, host of Revive Radio. I need you all out there to do one thing for me right now. Spread the word, spread the message that Revive is Alive. Once again, Revive is Alive. And I need you guys to go check out our website at reviveisalive.com. Once again, reviveisalive.com. And follow us, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at revive underscore POC. Welcome to Revive. It's about that time. Welcome to Revive. It's about that time. All I need is one mic. You know what time it is. Open up your ears. You know what time it is. Open up your mind. It's about that time. It's your girl POC. Hey! It's your girl POC. Hey! Proof of consciousness. Proof of consciousness. know what time it is man it's me your girl poc host for revive turn your radios up man each and every sunday we are live here on time for an awakening man you can catch us at revive is alive.com once again that's revive is alive.com or you can go directly to tune in you can either download the app or just go directly to the website and just search Time for an Awakening and hit meet your girl POC reviving your airways each and every Sunday. And don't forget, we got that good winning Wednesday for you guys each and every winning Wednesday from 8 p.m. to 10 p.m. So definitely spread the word, spread the message that Revive is alive. We're going to go ahead and jump into it with our first guest today, man. I'm really excited to be speaking with her. Win her circle, you're live on Revive. How are you? Hey. What's up with you? What's up with you? How are you? Go ahead and introduce yourself and let the people know exactly who you're speaking to. So my name is Deja May White, and I'm the founder of the Win Her Circle. I'm from Washington, D.C., home team. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so what's up? Um, so when it comes to Win Her Circle, right, first off, I just have to ask this question. Have you listened to the new Her album? Of course. Okay. I was on Her before her was the thing <laughs> exactly right man definitely when I, seen this, I was like i gotta ask her about the album i gotta ask her so you feeling a new album or you still feeling volume one volume two um i love it i love that she's being more open about who she is and you know slowly starting to show who she is as, as a person but i do love the fact that you know she started out by kind of putting the music first and not letting people see who she was. They, yes. She just wanted to use her platform to show people her music. Definitely. And do you do you get inspired by her as an artist? You know what I mean? Does it transcend into transcend into win her circle at all? Um, it doesn't relate, but I do um 
I just I love her. I love music in general. So um, definitely hearing her album was like a breath of fresh air, especially with all of this crazy music they play now on the radio. It was really good to start hearing music from, you know, people or artists that actually have substance. But they don't relate. Um, the Winner's Circle was something that I created because I saw a need for guidance in college women. So I wanted to create something, some type of um, support system that women can come together and achieve their goals together. I'm with you on that. So when it comes to just the actual title, Win Her Circle, that's very creative. Like, what, what, where did that inspire from? Okay, so I'm really big on meditation. I think it's a great way to kind of clear your mind, you know, get out all of your thoughts and really just be one with yourself. So um, I went to a conference. uh, It was a face-to-face entrepreneurship conference uh, about Tiffany Montgomery. And um, I went because I didn't know what my purpose was in life, but I knew that I had one. So I went to a conference, and after that, I really just spent some time to – figure out what I wanted and how I could be a light to the world and I was meditating one day and once I finished I was writing down a few names and then like the winner's circle like God spoke to me and was like the winner's circle and I'm like okay 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 I got the name I don't know what you want me to do with this God (laughs) you gave me the name and I'm a visual person so the first thing I did was go to my laptop and the logo came to me like everything just came to me and from there I just kind of like piece things together things started to come together my motto came which is collaborate to elevate and everything just started to come together that's how I knew that I was aligned with my purpose were you still in college at this time yes I was a junior yeah I was a junior okay and what school what school you go to what school if you don't mind me asking what school did you go to the Edward Waters College, located in Jacksonville, Florida. <laughs> we are the oldest HBCU in Florida. Awesome. That's what, that's what <laughs> I went to HBCU, too. So I really wanted you to shout that out because we need to keep these HBCUs alive, man. People be trying to hate on these HBCUs. And we need yes, some of that funding, always. too. We need some of that funding, man. If y'all listening, man, we need some of that funding. So definitely go ahead and fund them HBCUs for real, for real. Because we got yes, some intelligent people coming out them HBCUs. So would you say being a part of that HBCU environment, you know what I'm saying, would you say that actually helped you to stem win her circle, too? Because you know you can really get lost. You can either thrive in the HBCU cir- in environment or you can actually get lost in an HBCU environment. So would you say that that actually helped you to create your idea too as well? Yes, the most definitely. Um, so I graduated high school in 2010 and I attended North Carolina Central University and that's still my first love. Like I always loved Central. Um, but I was partying. I was living my best life. I didn't go to class. Like I wasn't <laughs> focused. So me attending Everwater College was like a second chance to do it right. And I was like, if you had, I, before I went to EWC, I asked myself, if you had the opportunity to go back to college, what would you do differently? And from there, the winner's circle was created because I know that we, as not just college women, but we need guidance. And if I would have had that guidance the first time around, I probably would have graduated in 2014 when I was supposed to graduate. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's a fact. So would you say, like, even like so just 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 talking like from being 17 to 23 let's just think about that right because that can really Mm -hmm. be a roller coaster of an age gap for us especially as women because we're trying to figure it just trying to figure it the hell out like what we really trying to do in this world so when it comes to people between the age of 17 and 23 how receptive are they to guidance and wanting to listen to people who are you know not necessarily you know 10 years older than them maybe two three years older than them or the same age as them How, how receptive are people between that age gap have you found um so during this this time in your life you're really not that receptive to um guidance you you're more like oh I figure it out I'm grown you know once you turn 18 you're like oh I'm grown I'm at my parents house I don't have to you know listen to anybody so that's where it really took me to have a lot of patience to deal with I don't want to say deal with like it's a hassle but to be able to find a different approach of how to make the that demographic more receptive and um so that they can learn and still get that guidance but initially they're standoffish they're like no I'm not really interested and the more I pour them in they're like oh really well tell me more and and when when you tell them or do you do you automatically get their attention or do you really have to like grab like grab them and be like this is for you 
Well, usually I'll try to find some way to relate to them. If I can find some way to relate to them where they can, where we can be on a common ground, then from there we can kind of go from there. Because if you, you have to establish that trust and that relationship first before you do anything. So if I don't feel like I trust you or if I feel like that we can't relate or if I feel like you're looking down on me instead of actually wanting, you know, having my best interest in mind, then I'm not going to even open up to you. So I try to relate to them. I try to create those genuine relationships initially. And then from there, once I feel like I've gotten their trust, I can kind of guide them into the direction that they want to go into. And do you do this through like workshops? Do you do this through like meditation? Because you you know, you practice meditation yourself. How do you actually get them to, you know, understand what you're trying to do to try to help them, to guide them, to mold them? How do you put them in that, that right direction? Um, I ask them like questions. I ask them a lot of self reflection questions, like, what do you want? Where do you see yourself? Um, because a lot of people they don't really think about that. Like, where do they wanna be? Some people go to college because that's what their parents want them to do. Some people go because they don't have another option or they don't even have a place to live. So I ask them, what do they want? What do you want to get out of this relationship that we have? What is your ultimate goal? And when they start thinking about those things, they're more, um, they, we hold them accountable to actually achieving the goals that they set out to do. So it's no like one size fit all approach. Everybody is different, but um, yeah, I try to ask them a lot of self-reflection questions and just connect with them, basically. And would you say, like, <laughs> when you say that there's not, like, not one, you know, one size fill all approach, do you still mm-hmm. feel as though that you have to approach each different individual, you know, differently, though? Um, In a way, yes, because me, so anybody that, that works for me, that's on my team, they know that I'm a lot. Like, I'm a handful, especially when it comes to um, getting things done. I'm very anal about getting things done, meeting deadlines. So sometimes I can come off a little abrasive. And, and you know, being from D.C. and going to a more <laughs> countryer environment, some people take our, our um, personality as blunt or harsh, when really that's just the culture of North. Exactly. So some people, to some people, they don't understand that. So some, sometimes I have to like rein back so that I'm, they know that I'm coming from a genuine place and it's not just me being harsh or me, you know, um, coming off in the wrong way. Facts. We were just taught to survive a little bit differently. You know what I'm saying? Yes, I, definitely. <laughs> I can agree with you on that one. I can definitely <laughs> agree with you on that one. So do you also, like, I know that it's win her circle, right? But do you also mm-hmm. find men gravitating to you at all? You know, because some of these some of these men have mom problems. Some of these men have women problems. Do you see yourself yeah. gravitating to men at all? Or do you see them gravitating to you? Um, Definitely. So when I first started the women's circle, I had so many people, like, so many guys coming up to me like, we need something for the guys. Like, y'all got all of this stuff for the women. What you going to do for the guys? And I'm like, I mean, in my opinion, I feel like I can't teach you how to be a man because I'm a woman. That's a fact. But I can point you to the right direction and give you the resources and tools that you need. But I can't teach you something that I'm not, like, I don't know about. So, yeah, definitely a lot of – um college guys have reached out to me like hey you need to do something so I try to when I have events I try to do stuff that's just not like you know cater to women that is that everyone can come out and learn something from and what kind of events have you put on so far um so I did a panel discussion where I had a few business women in Jacksonville to come out and talk about it was called when uh, it was called uh I'm sorry it was called finding your story her story when is her story month so we did, they had a, we had a panel discussion and they talked about their story from when they started their business to where they are now. And we had a really great turnout. Um, we had a crowd of people who were already entrepreneurs. We had um, young women who were aspiring, women who were still in college who didn't really know which route they wanted to take. So it was a, it was a very diverse crowd from different perspectives and backgrounds. Um, we did a lot of events within the community. I'm a real big advocate on giving back to the community. So we did a lot of events um, in the community, and we plan on doing more partnerships with, like, local high schools and stuff. I'm with you on that. So when you say, like, telling 
uh the her history i can't even get it out properly the, the <laughs> what, her in front Women's of history. history month yeah like so when you did that what was the objective like i i know it was for them to tell their history but what if, what was like the objective for the audience to actually get out of it just to have a conversation i don't think we have a con we don't talk enough about how great we are like we don't we don't have those conversations we're not you don't see a lot of people talking about black excellence you see people you know we're always on the news for getting shot for getting gunned down police brutality but it's not we don't have a lot of conversations of how excellent we actually are and how can you know i use this mentor relationship to get where they are now somebody that i look up to i'm in the same room as them and i'm able to learn from their story to create my own so I just, I wanted to just have a conversation and show young women that we're out here and it's a lot of black excellence out here, but I just want to shed light on it even more. I'm with you on that one, definitely, because it is a lot of black excellence out here. and You are part of that category, man. Definitely doing your thing with Win Her Circle, for Thank real. You. No doubt. And you, so you also graduated with a business management degree. Have you been mm-hmm. using it at all? Like, I just have to ask, but it's been a millennial show. You know, you have a lot of millennial entrepreneurs out there who are not even using the degree that they set out for. So are you using your degree at all? Yes, definitely. Business is close to my heart. Even before I... Um, went back to get the, to obtain my bachelor's degree in business. I always knew that I wanted to be an entrepreneur. Like growing up, I used to watch. Uh, I don't know if you remember Kamora, her show, the Living Life in a Sad Lane. I like you. I used to watch her show. I I swear I felt like I was a part of her show. <laughs> <laughs> I used to watch her show. I looked up to Tyra Banks, like you know when she started when she first started America's Next Top Model. Just those boss women. I always were attracted to that type of woman. I'm like, I, I love watching movies that um, are catered toward the strong female lead. So I knew that I always wanted to work on myself and I, I knew that I always wanted to be a boss. So yeah, I'm definitely using the things that I've learned in college to um, get where I want to be in my business and grow. If you could tell, you know, some a young woman who's listening to you right now how important entrepreneurship really is, what would you actually tell them? Um, entrepreneurship is very important. If it's something that you want to pursue, don't wait, don't think about it too much. Just do it. Pray about it. If you believe in God, I hope so. <laughs> but pray about it and just do it. Don't wait. Don't listen to people that try to project their fears on you and tell you that you can't do it. If there's something you want to do, you have to put the work in and do it. And once you put the work in, it will show for it will always show forth. But just know that the same day that you plant your seed is not the same day you're going to see the harvest. You have to put in the work so that you can see the harvest in the future. Like she, and nine times out of ten, your tears are going to be the one watering that harvest for real. For real, yes. you're really putting in that work. <laughs> I'm trying to tell you, it's going to be your tears that's that's watering that flower for real. But so yes, when it comes, definitely. but when it comes to entrepreneurship, right? This is one thing that I have learned, right? Just going through the motion, mm-hmm. going through my journey and different things like that. It's not for everybody. It's honestly it's truly not. not for everybody. I feel like um everybody plays a role. You know what I'm saying? And not everybody can be that leader. Not everybody can be that CEO. Somebody has to be that administrative assistant. You know what I'm saying? Somebody has to be, you know, the uh, the the social media person. And it's like you mm-hmm. spoke earlier, you spoke on like your team and different things like that. How hard was it for you to put together a team to actually master, you know, master your organization, master your craft so you can get where you are right now? Um, so hard because like I said, like I said, I could be a little abrasive sometimes, especially when, like when I want something, I want it and I'm not going to stop until I get it. So it takes a certain type of person to even deal with me. Um, shout out to Jasmine Berry and she is like my backbone. She like, when we have events and stuff like that, she's like, okay, May, I already know what you need me to do. I'll do this, 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 this. And she helps, she really helps me because she knows how I am. Um, but it was very hard in the beginning to kind of get those like-minded people, especially in a college environment, because I'm a more of a non-traditional student. So my mentality is a little different from everybody else at the time. So it was hard, but it came together. And I prayed about it. I asked God to, you know, surround me with the women who are like-minded and that are on the same page that I am. And 
yeah, it's been great. And would you say that you started with the same people you are with now? Yeah, yeah, okay, still with the it. same people. And it's it's not a lot. It's, it's not a, I don't have like a big circle of, of people, but um, we definitely make it work. And speaking of circle, right? So that that's that's mm-hmm. that's a great segue. So you don't have to mm-hmm. say you know keep your circle tight, keep your circle small. But then you're promote you're promoting something, um, you know, such as win her circle. So when it mm-hmm. comes to creating a circle, you know, what would you tell people who are listening to you right now when it comes to keeping your circle, you know, compact <laughs> and you know keeping resources in your circle for reasons and not seasons? Oh uh, yeah, definitely. So I think. One of the things in the winner circle that I always say is accountability. And I do this a lot with my friends too. Um, just always holding each other accountable. Like I don't need a circle full of yes men. I don't need people saying, oh yeah, yeah, you can do this, you can do that. And it's like, no, you can't, but let's figure out how can we do something else. Like I need, make sure that you are surrounded by women who have your best interests at heart who um, have diverse opinions about different things. You don't want the same type of people in the circle because there's no room to grow. Um, Women that are not afraid to tell you the truth, no matter how hard it could be. And just always supporting you no matter what, through your ups, through your downs. It's been times where, you know, I've, I've promoted a lot of things and only two people showed up. But the fact that I'm still going and I made the effort and I had those support of women who, you know, stuck by my side and was still there with me no matter what. That is so important. So accountability. Um, hers actually stands for honesty, enrichment, reciprocity, and support. So nice. I think your circle should be just those things, honesty, enrichment, um, reciprocity, and support. I'm with you on that one. Definitely I'm with you on that one. Definitely you need somebody in your team who going to tell you when you got lipstick on your teeth or you got food on your face. You yes. That's the one to blame your leave out before they take the picture. <laughs> yes. You be like, yo, your bra strap showing us something. You always right. need that rider right there. Like, for real, for real, you need that rider, man. Because I have grown, and I've grown, like, you've been in circles, and you know what I'm saying? People won't even let you know, but they'll be the same when they want to jump in that picture with you. But then you take the picture, and you look at it like, bro, why you going to tell? You know what I'm saying? So I I definitely exactly. agree with you. I agree with you on that one too. But I wanted to ask you this question too, because when you were in college, you were the president of Fashion Forward. So when mm-hmm. it comes to fashion, and especially with women in general, like especially when you have, you know, the love and hip hop, but then you also have, you know, um, the the classy. You got so many different things going on when it comes to dressing. You got the Kim Kardashian style. You got the Black China style. Different things like that. When you think of like women in fashion, what's like the first thing that comes to your mind, especially when it comes to entrepreneurship should it always be you know the hillary clinton pantsuit or can we bust it out one mm-hmm. time with the kim kardashian fashion nova what, what, what do you think <laughs> um i think just being authentic to you whatever you feel comfortable in wear it and be confident in whatever you decide to wear i don't think there's no at one point in time there was like a a, a stigma that you know women had to wear you know, this pantsuit, well, women had to wear this skirt suit and pantyhose and, you know, heels that were three inches or below. But I think as long as you're authentic to your style and who you are, and keep that in mind with the type of environment you're going to be in and just be confident and own it. Now, of course, you want to wear a club dress to a networking event, but <laughs> kind of, you know, keep in mind the type of yeah, but always remain true to your style and who you are as a person. But how hard is that to come off to like a 17, 18, 19 year old? Because nine times out of 10, the only dresses that they have in their closet, you know what I'm saying, it's coming from Fashion Nova. They don't even got the pantsuit yet because you typically don't mm-hmm. get the pantsuit until you go into like your resume builder and that's like, and you know, your senior year type thing. So it's like for the sophomores and juniors, they don't really have the pantsuits yet. So how do you come off to people, you know what I mean, who are still in that, that younger stage? Well, with them, I will kind of, like, put them, like, I'll be like, okay, guys, we're going to have a mock, we're going to do, like, mock interviews. So I do this with my ment- uh, my mentees, like, okay, we're going to have a mock interview, and you have to come dress business casual or business professional. And then I'll lay out to them what that looks like, like, okay, business professional, you know, you'll wear a blazer, you'll make sure you have some type of collar shirt, like, this is, if you're going, especially if you want to go into more of the corporate world, um this is what this looks like and then when they come and i see what they have on i'm like okay 
you did a good job. However, next time take this out and add this. But overall, you know, you really made a great effort. So always giving them that support and not just giving them all the negatives, but also the positives as well and making every experience a learning experience. Definitely, I went you on that one. Definitely, you answered that one the political way. So everybody out there, like, yeah, I'm about to sign my 17 year old daughter up right now. That was definitely the way for real. But also, so when it comes to you know you guys being in Jacksonville, do you ever see yourself going back to the DMV area to put on the same kind of projects to you know enlighten people in your own community? Oh yes, most definitely. So the Winter Circle is not. Um, it is not just on EWC campus. That's where I started it because, you know, that's where I graduated from. But my ultimate goal is to get on HBCU campuses, like, all across the world. Like, that is my ultimate goal. So um, I want to create that, that type of environment. And a lot of young women from other colleges, you know, have reached out to me like, hey, I would love something like this on my campus. So Stay tuned. That's all I'm going to say. We're in the works of, like, restructuring Damn. the winter circle and uh, catering to a, a more specific demographic. But that's definitely in the work. Soon coming. That's big. That's really big. And I want to ask you another question, too, about the synergy, right? I thought that was really good because I'm really big on synergy, energy, all mm -hmm. of it. I'm really big on that, especially when it comes to keeping my chakras aligned. Um, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. you know, <laughs> I'm so serious because some people can really, you know, test you a little bit, especially when it comes to that little negativity. They can tempt mm -hmm. you a little bit. So it's like when it comes to the synergy, um, how do you put that out there without, you know what I'm saying, you know, putting your – your your thoughts and your your motivation onto others because a lot of people be like i'm not there yet i'm not there yet and a lot of people's like if you force me to get there i'm never going to get there so how do you get people to to you know get that synergy popping without forcing it onto them um so we kind of like coin you know how they used to say like oh you can't sit with us or no new friends so okay. we kind of like coined the phrase when we say um you can sit with us only if you're ready to elevate so that's the only contingency. I'm not like this is anybody can be a part, but only if you're willing and you're ready to elevate. Because if not, you can sit somewhere else. You can't sit with us. <laughs> but <laughs> that's my way of it. Like if you just if you're willing to make the first step, if you're willing to even take the initiative to be greater than you are, then you're always welcome. And that's why I love how you say greatness is a choice. It really is a choice. You can choose to. Mm -hmm sit around or you can choose to, you know, be the master of your fate and actually make a difference in someone else's life and know that this life is not just here for you. And that's a fact. It really is a choice, honestly, because a lot of people make the only thing that we have in life are choices, honestly. Like once you're here, you're here. And it's whatever mm -hmm. you decide to do with your life is what you decide to do with your life. But you have to remember that started with a choice. You know what I'm saying? A decision started yeah. with a choice. You made a decision to choose that option. So people be forgetting that part that they chose to do that. So that's why I always say it is a choice. But I also want to just say one last thing before we go ahead and wrap up. How can people mm -hmm. get into uh, Win Her Circle? Because I know you guys got um, mentorship programs. I got personal development, professional development, community involvement. So how can someone be a part? How can someone reach out to you guys? Um, so you can, my website is thewinnercircle.org. You can follow me on Instagram at thewinnercircle to get more information about becoming a part, whether you want to be a mentor or whether you want to be a mentee. Like I said, it's not just exclusive to um, EWC or Jacksonville. We are branching out, but yeah, definitely hit me up and I can get your information and give you more information about how you can become a part of the Winner Circle. Doubt. And before I let you go, you already know tonight, 7 p.m. is going down. Let the people know how they can tune in, how they can find you. And also, if they can be um, a win her of the week, too, how can they participate? How can they get involved? Yes. So tonight, the winner of the week is the lovely Proof of Consciousness. Yes, we yes, are going yes. to interview her and basically talk about her brand and how she got started with things tune in make sure you follow the win her circle on instagram and once you see that we go on live you just you know tune in and make sure you tag your friends to join um the winner of the week we kind of just hand select people to become a part so if you feel that um you want to be a winner of the week or you want to nominate someone you can email us and tell us why you would think they would be a great winner of the week 
and when did you guys get this started? Like, why did you start this? Um, we started this September 28th of last year. Um, oh, I wanted to start this. Like I said, I wanted to create um, a group of, of, of environment of synergy where like-minded women can come together to hold it, to hold each other accountable for achieving their goals. I wanted to create that standard so that there's always a place where you can go where, you you know, you might hang out with your friends and you might not feel fulfilled or you may feel like you're the strong friend and you don't really have that support. Well, becoming a part of the winner circle allows you to have that support system with people who understand what you're going through and that are right in the trenches with you to figure things out and matriculate through life. No doubt, man. No doubt. And y'all, y'all coming up on a year too, September. But when did the actual yes. win her? <laughs> did win her circle start uh, last year too? Yes. Awesome, y'all coming up on a year. Y'all did this big and and all only three sixty five, man. That's amazing, man. Like like I try yes. to tell people, people who born in DC, you know what I'm saying. We just we just we was bre- we was breeded a little bit differently, you know what I'm saying. We got a little bit more in us. When when somebody tell us <laughs> to do something, we gonna do it ten times bigger, man. Did you see what Mike D'Angelo did? Um, he walked from Washington D.C. all the way to Philly. Um, and he's a he's a native of uh, Washington D.C. His his niece um was shot down and murdered and just violent gun act and um he walked from the spot where she was murdered in dc all the way to the african-american museum in philadelphia to show you know that we need to put these guns down and gun violence needs to end right now oh my gosh that is so amazing yes. that is so inspiring i don't even think i could walk from like <laughs> Like, Philly to be city, yeah. That's, that's a two definitely hour. a movement. Yeah. I can't even walk across the street without breathing too hard. <laughs> so that is amazing. <laughs> well, we need to go ahead and implement some physical activities into the Win Her Circle because we need you to be able we to work do, out, We do, we do, child, we do. <laughs> We're working on it. <laughs> no doubt, man. Well, go ahead and give yourself a shout-out once again, your website, social media, email, so that people can de- definitely stay locked to you guys. Yes, yeah, so my website is the winner circle, the win her circle dot org. Um, my Instagram is at the win her circle. You can email us whether you want to be a part of the winner circle or if you want to be a mentor um, at the winner circle at gmail dot com. And make sure you are tuned in tonight as we interview POC um, yes. for the winner of the week at 7 p.m. at the winner circle on Instagram live. No doubt, man. 7 p.m. is going down the Win Her Circle, man. I appreciate you guys coming through Support Revive Radio. I cannot wait for tonight to support you guys on your platform, man. Let's stay connected. Let's turn these airways up, man. 7 p.m. We going live. IG TV, you already know. Hey, <laughs> thanks for having me. No doubt. Thank you, man. That wraps up a great, 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 great interview, man, with the Win Her Circle, man. Man, definitely check them out. Social media, Facebook, Twitter, all that. Definitely check out their Instagram as well at Win Her Circle. And don't forget about their website at thewinhercircle.org, man. Definitely check them out. Not .com, .org. Check them out, man. Definitely find them right now. We're going to go to a quick commercial break. Right after this quick commercial break, we'll be up next with your boy Brax from TLS. You already know what time it is. It's me, your girl, POC. Turn your radios up. I did get as mad as a bear. Yeah, I'm mad, all right. He used a bargain trash bag. Some bargain. Mike, you should have used Glad Quick Tie bags. Glad Quick Tie are the only bags with three ply strength. They won't break like this bargain bag. These Glad bags are tough. None tougher. Go deep. Don't get mad. Nice arm. Get Revive is alive. Once again, Revive is alive. I want you guys out there to follow us Facebook, Twitter, Instagram at Revive underscore POC. And don't forget to subscribe, subscribe, subscribe to that Revive newsletter where you can find at reviveisalive.com. Once again, that is reviveisalive.com. Spread the word, spread the message. It's me, your girl POC, host of Revive Radio.
this man is weekly girl PLC host of Revive Radio. And every second and fourth Wednesday of the month, you can get your girl Tab Money here live on Revive Radio with Tab Money Habits, man. That good financial wealth, that good financial coaching, man, live here on Revive Radio each and every second and fourth Wednesday of the month, hosted by your girl Tab Money. Welcome to Revive. It's about that time. Welcome to Revive. It's about that time. All I need is my you know what time it is. Open up your ears. You know what time it is. Open up your mind. It's about that time. It's your girl POC. Hey! It's your girl POC. Hey! Proof of consciousness. Yep, yep. You know what time it is, man. It's me, your girl POC, host for Revive, man. We are live right now. On time for an awakening, you can check us out on reviveisalive.com. Once again, that is reviveisalive.com. You can either go directly to tune in, you can download the app, or go directly to the website and just search time for an awakening to hit me. You're going to POC reviving your airways each and every Sunday with that good Sunday morning talk radio, man, from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. We are now into the second hour of the show, and you already know we got your boy Brax from the left side of politics coming through for the What's Buzzing segment, man, giving us that actual factual turn your radios up. What's buzzing? Lost in a world full of words or a combination of which enters me. On to rants such as what's buzzing. What's amazing is what a large world this is. Today in this world, we are either talking about the something, the no thing, and what's buzzing. Current events, let's talk about it. You have an opinion. Let's talk about it. What's buzzing? Brax, what it do? What it do? What's buzzing, baby? How you feeling today? Good afternoon. I'm feeling all right. How are you? I'm good, man. I'm good. It's Sunday morning. I'm rejuvenated. How was your weekend? My weekend was good. I just moved back to Massachusetts, so I'm still getting settled in. Okay. And how was Massachusetts? I've never been there before. How's Mass? It's all right. Is it cold? Is it, it's not cold right now, is it? It's, it's it got a little temperature. No, it's oh no no no, it's it's summertime right now. Okay. But during the winter, it does get like that. It'll be like two degrees, like a wind chill factor of you know like negative fifteen. And that's home. That's home for you. That's the hometown for you, right? Yep, yeah, this is home for me. Awesome. Like, you, why are you not excited? You like it was okay. Like, then you get to see your family, your friends. Like, you're not excited about going home. I am back. I am. I'm a little excited. Um, it's just a little bit different. I mean, like I came home because there's some exciting news I'll be sharing in the coming weeks, hopefully. Okay. Um, you know, something new. But um, so I came home for that. But I mean, it's just it was just kind of like so sudden. But I'm like I'm excited, but it's just a little bit different. That's all. Okay. Okay. All right. I, I definitely want to hear that tea when it comes. Please make sure I hear that tea. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> when it definitely comes. But no. So um, I know you guys have been on a break. But it's still been mm-hmm. a lot going on. It's been a lot going on. And I want to start with the juiciness, man. So Donald Trump got them Twitter fingers again um, Friday night. And he decided to go on Twitter and call people out their names. This is the president of the United States. <laughs> Brax, like, this is the president of the United States. And he decided to call people out of their names. Like, he decided to take time out of his busy, busy schedule, as he would say, because he's so busy, right? Um, and he decided mm-hmm. to call LeBron James. Well, he called Don Lemon stupid. That's what he said. I'm not gonna. He called Don Lemon stupid. Would you think that he was calling LeBron James stupid at the same time too? I would think so. I mean, he was trying to imply it. Um, but then turned around and I called. Um, <clears throat> I would say it was implied to me personally. But um, to the end of he did say like LeBron James was just interviewed by the dumbest man on television. Don Lemon. Yeah. Um. He made LeBron look smart. When he said that, that's just that. Like when he said that, it's like she so called them both dumb, which isn't easy to do. And he's like, I like Mike. The thing about that too was like it took Michael Jordan like a minute to like come out and say like, nah, like don't put me in this. And all he really did was just like release like some like little press statement. 
that was just like I support what LeBron's doing. Yes, like it wasn't even it wasn't even like a, a statement. It was one it was a one liner. It was a liner. That's what they call mm-hmm. those. It was a liner. He said that um, I support Le- I, I support what LeBron James is doing, and then he put a picture of them, you know, shaking each other's hands to support that all at the same time. So like when I tell you that it really sh- like really got me shooken up. Like I was like, yo, like Donald Trump is really trying. And the reason why I feel like he put Michael Jordan in that is because, you know, Michael Jordan owns private prisons. So he's not, you know, too far, too far from, you know, what Donald Trump and all his bigot friends are doing in the first place. Right. So when it comes to, when it comes to Donald Trump and the whole LeBron James thing, it even came out to where Donald Trump had recent tweets um, supporting LeBron James, saying that he's a good guy, back even back when he was playing for the uh, Miami Heat. So, like, when it comes to Donald Trump and his forgetful memory and things like that, do you think that he's going to speak up and apologize? Apologize to who? To Don Lemon. No. No. That's not the first time, too. I don't believe that's not the first time he's called Don Lemon. I like, got his name right. said something about Don Lemon. But... I really don't see I really don't see Donald Trump apologizing to either one of them. Like I don't. Like I don't truly see that coming. Nowhere in the near future. Nowhere in the near or future. Or in the future at all. Do you see people speaking out really, about I'm sorry, what are you gonna say? The only way he would apologize is if they basically started to kiss his behind like some of the staff does. That's the only way he would apologize. Because you see like he goes after his own staff and after his own quote unquote friends, the people in this corner. So for people that are not even in this corner who criticize him and do work that apparently has a problem with, like, he will never apologize. Do you think he's uh, – all right, so even if he doesn't apologize, do you think he's going to take down the tweet? He probably won't. His team might. We'll, we should, we'll have to wait and see. Okay. Cause, so, but I personally don't think – I think if it was up to him, I don't think he would take down the tweet. But maybe some of his team might advise him to. And then there might be some statement – or maybe that like, hopefully I can see there might be some statement as of I was out of line or something like that. But then, but then it'll be like a, he's getting ready to apologize and it'll turn to be like, but CNN is fake or something like that. Like that's the closest I can see it getting. Like I can already envision it, like how it would kind of get close to an apology, and then he would just veer left again. I can't even believe this. Honestly, Brax, I can't even believe the tweet is still up. It's Sunday. He tweeted this on Friday, and the tweet is still up. Like, I'm looking at it right now. So I just want to read it verbatim of what he actually said. So for the people who Mm -hmm. have not seen the tweet. So Donald Trump tweeted out on Friday, LeBron James was interviewed by the dumbest man on television, Don Lemon. If you guys don't know, Don Lemon is a CNN commentator or CNN reporter. He has his own show. I'm not I'm not sure the name of the show, but it's on CNN. Um, and then the tweet goes on to say he made LeBron look smart, which is isn't which isn't easy to do. I like Mike. Don Lemon responded, "Who's the real dummy? A man who puts kids in a classroom or a man who put who puts kids in a cage?" So I thought that was a great mm-hmm. response, honestly, truly. I thought that was a great spot response because he didn't get nasty. He didn't call him out of his name. All he did was speak facts. So I think Don Lemon had a great, great response. What about you? I think he did, too. And so, yeah, his show is CNN tonight. And, like, you know, the key thing in that, too, is that Don Lemon is also, like, one of, like, the only, like, black, like, um, anchors, like, at CNN that I can think of. And he actually has, like, his own segment. And he's gay, too. Well, not gay. He's part of the LGBT yeah. community. So I think that that's amazing, too, because their CNN is actually highlighting two different, you know what I'm saying, communities all at the same time by him being African-American and then him also being part of the LGBT community. So I think yeah. that that's dope. So shout out to my guy, Don Lemon. He cut the fro. Did you peep that? He cut the fro. That's a blessing. I know. I'm a little <laughs> sad. You're sad. I was so happy. I was like, yes, to this fro being cut. Jay Z is next. Jay Z needs to cut his fro, and then we'll be good. Between him and Don Lemon, I thought they was going through like these midlife crisis for a second. There was at one point he was interviewed by a podcast I listened to, and I guess like he had the he had like the pick in the office, and the person interviewing him was like, he is picking out his fro in the mirror, like <laughs> like, like oh my gosh. <laughs> That I can respect. That I can respect real. I can respect that, honestly, truly. I can respect that. But let's go ahead and jump into it, man. Let's go ahead and jump into it. So what is the first topic you got for us today and what's buzzing? So I want to talk about how apparently collusion is not illegal, according to the former New York City mayor, 
um, a.k.a. Trump's little minion, a.k.a. Rudy Giuliani. Mm -hmm. (laughs) So Rudy Giuliani came out and said that um, he's gone through and looked through the federal code and that collusion isn't illegal. He's like, you can't find anywhere where collusion actually is illegal. He's like, even though collusion didn't happen, it's not illegal. And then the president, or Donald Trump, whatever you want to call him, came out and I cannot believe I just called him the president. I slipped up. Sorry. Um, I'm not supposed to be calling Donald Trump the president. I slipped up. <laughs> that's, that's not a good thing. Um, but yeah, so um, Trump came out and um, they liked to Twitter and I believe I supported that. I said the same thing that, oh, that collusion, well, collusion is not illegal. So like, so now you're going from denying and saying that there is no collusion to now saying that, well, collusion isn't illegal. While Paul Manafort, not Paul Manafort, while, Pat, while his former lawyer, Paul Manafort, um, not his lawyer, I'm sorry, I'm getting it too confused. So, um, so, so Brax, can I ask a quick question? While, Brax, can I ask a yeah. quick question before you go go a little bit deeper into it, right? So people, um, some people who are listening may not know exactly what you're referring to. So when you're talking about collusion, can you explain to them a little bit about the collusion that you're actually referring to? Yeah, yeah. so the collusion is, um, the Trump campaign colluding with Russia during the 2016 election and um, the belief that um, they knew about the hacking and that they also um, were trying to get dirt on Hillary Clinton and the Democratic Party. Yes. So, um, you know, like there was a meeting at Trump Tower between Donald Trump Jr. and um, some Russian hackers. And so what's coming out now it, or what came out now is that um, supposedly Donald Trump did know about Donald Trump Sr. did know about did know about the meeting, and um, said that he didn't. And so um, his former attorney, who's not an attorney anymore, which is uh, Michael Cohen, um, is actually saying that um, Donald Trump did know about the meeting. So um, now that he's not worried anymore. He's finally saying this. Um, they're saying he doesn't know anything, and that you know that's a lie which why would your former attorney lie even though that is kind of breaking um, um attorney client privilege um don't know where that's coming from but um that's kind of like where we are now so um they swear that there isn't any collusion however the special um prosecutor which is um robert mueller um has indicted i believe over 35 people on wow. different and over with over 200 different charges um related to hacking and collusion um, with Donald Trump. That's crazy. And then five and of it, which have pled, five of them have pled guilty thus far. And if you let him tell it, it's just a witch hunt. Right. If you let him tell but it, just it's just a witch hunt. They're just making things up. They're trying to put so many things, so many lies on him and everything that he's doing. And people are, are now being convicted of these things, correct? Well, they're being charged right now, and the court cases are starting. But like I said, five of them have pled guilty. According to CNBC, five people have pled guilty thus far to the charges. So, do you see that? Do you see all of the lies coming out sooner than twenty twenty? God, I hope so. Um, <laughs> yes, I think that's. I think that they're going to strike gold sometime by the end of the year. But- like I really do. But okay, so let's let's put this in perspective, though, Brack. So, like, if they do find all the information that they need, right, for impeachment to 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 bring Donald Trump down, to just you know put all the information out there, to bring his whole, um, you know, his whole party down, because a lot of people play part in this, as you just said, 153 people. Um, so with this being said, how can this actually hurt or harm the American people? Because at the end, we're just gonna you know be getting Mike Pence as a president. That's what I'm um, saying. So, like, it's really hard. It's like, well, do so, we really want to tackle this well, so monster? This, this could go one or two ways, right? So, if they find something like the um the smoking bullet, or however you say it, the smoking gun, rather, um, then, you know, they have to do the proceedings in the House and the Senate, um, like, to impeach him. The thing about it is now that's when midterm elections come in, because if the House and the Senate are sort of controlled by Republicans, I can't safely say that he actually would be impeached. You said you cannot because say you he have, would or he would not. I, I, I can't I, I don't I can't safely I can't definitively say that they would actually impeach him. Despite all of that, I if the House and the Senate were in control of Republicans, I 
cannot definitively say that they would actually impeach him. So, so like, Honestly. so, and that's the crazy part because impeachment has to be voted on, correct? Yes. So, um, like, they do an investigation and then it's brought to that because Bill Clinton was impeached in the House and not the Senate, I believe. So he was almost fully impeached as president, but not, but not fully. Um, and like I said, like that, that's where it comes down to. I think the Senate, um, it's going to be really hard for Democrats to con- to gain control of the Senate. However, with the House, I believe they actually do have a really great chance. So it'll be the same thing. Like if the Senate is Republican control and the House and the Democratic control, then you're going to have like one that's probably good that's going to impeach and the other one probably won't, depending unless you can flip a couple senators. So that's the, but that's the thing. So that's how midterms play like a big part in this because it's all about who we elect because we're going to be the ones like for the last two years down in Washington fighting the fight against him. So would you say that, you know what I mean, by you saying you, you don't think that they would impeach him, so would you say that they are still, they're still going to be on his side because that means that he lied to us. That means he lied to them. You know what I'm saying? So they, they wouldn't feel no type of way about that, you don't think? Like why would they want to keep this man in office? Well, if you look at how many um, actual senators and representatives, like every time we change the story, they defend him. So they lied to him. Or like he's lied to them. And they they still go to his defense. So it wasn't a lie. He was just saying this because of this. Like they come to his defense. So like I said, there, there probably will be some people that are like, okay, like I'm done. But the, like as we've seen, like for the first, like almost, because almost two years now, like the first two years of his presidency, um, you like there are people who like first started off with strong opposition against him and now like even like now Democrats, some democrats are even waning and just like okay like if we can get it passed we'll get it passed like the voting and like the good thing or like the way to check people and uh, to see the really put their money where their mouth is is to check their voting records so it's like people can say they're fiercely against trump and say yes i'm not going to support him or I have a problem with this, but if you look at the voting record and stuff that he put through, they're constantly voting yes for it, then you're not putting your money in your office. That's why I'm saying, like, I don't have a lot of faith if the government was to remain in control of the Republicans, um, that they would actually impeach him. Because they would take a lot of pissed off Republicans. And I don't think, like, they haven't gotten that pissed off yet. So I really don't think that if they find out, oh, he really did collude with Russia, they'd probably be like, well, I would, I'm waiting to see what type of excuse comes out of that. So do you think they Honestly. messed up? And do you think Donald Trump messed up by having that summit with Putin? Because from there, that's when a, a lot of other lies got exposed, too. Because Putin uh, said in that, you know, in the press conference that he wanted Donald Trump to win the presidency. Right. Um, I... Um, I, that press conference was just, as we talked about before, was just a hot mess in general. But um, yes, like I don't think that press conference should happen. And like e- even the way remember I talked about it before, um, he basically he basically said that, oh well, my entire national security team is telling me you did this, but since you told me no, I don't believe you did it, going against all recommendations. So um, that was one mistake of many that he made. And I feel like that's just going it, to, it's going to continue down that road. And like I said, I just have a feeling that they're going to find something or find like something solid by the end of the year. But that's the thing. I could though, be wrong. could be right. No, I, I think they're going to find something fast because I feel like Mueller is definitely moving onto the case. Like he's really doing his thing, especially, mm-hmm. you know, as many times he's been disrespected by Donald Trump. I think he wants to figure this out. You know well, what I'm saying? And, and so Trump is saying, and so Trump has said that um, there's a personal conflict with um with Mueller being on this case and Rudy Giuliani is pushing that too and he's saying that he has the conflict, not the president, and and Trump shouldn't have to defend his claim. He's like, I can't tell you what the conflict is. I'm not sure exactly what the conflict is, but he has a good idea of what it is. And what it is, to repeat that, is that Mueller was a member of Trump's National Golf Club in Virginia back in two thousand eleven. And he like he like stopped because of the dispute over some fees. So a dispute, like, it wasn't really, like, a real dispute. Like, it was just, like, okay, I'm leaving. And um, also, too, like, Mueller was a Republican, and so was Rod Rosenstein, who was Mueller's boss, technically. Mueller's boss through this. Um, and um, also, like, working on behalf of Trump, because he's the assistant, he's the assistant attorney general. So it's like, they're saying this is wish hunt against you, 
but from who you're saying the Democrats are leading this lynch hunt and on the do- and like going back to the dossier and all this stuff. But the people who are actually doing the investigation are the people who are on who are a part of your party. And that's the crazy part. They just believe they just believe in the law, and that's and that's like the, with the whole big thing. It's like like going back to Donald Trump himself. Like he doesn't literally believe. It's not even about party respect. It's about loyalty to him. And these people are loyal to their jobs and to the law. Like when you're an attorney, when you're a prosecutor, your loyalty is to the law. I think this is I honestly, truly like this is becoming like just my I mean, it's been mind blowing for a very long time since he's been elected. Like just my mind's been blown. But just, mm-hmm. you know, knowing that everything is coming out, he's still lying about everything, you know, still seeing people, you know, defend him, still seeing people back him up, still seeing and watching, you know, Sarah stand up there on that press, that press box and just talk and lie and just, you know, I'm just looking at just all of this and just looking at politics as a whole, especially coming up with the midterms. It's just like, yo, this is really just a lot of baloney. Like, it's really a lot of baloney. And Donald Trump has proven that time and time again that politics is full of, you know, um, people who are just hungry for just power money and 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 so many other things it's just it's just crazy to me it's really mind-boggling like to know that america is really just ran off of lies and and and, 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 and false and dreams and it, false hopes isn't it kind of sad too that i started to um i'm not normal i think it's not normal but you see like how i'm just kind of like i'm not even like mind blown anymore like, think about, like, some of the first conversations we've had versus, like, now. Like, when you do stuff, might be so fired up, and now I'm just like, okay, yeah. like, you did another thing. Why are we surprised? Like and, like, that, that is so bad that, that, that that's the point that we're at. We're like, I'm, that we're just like, okay, you said this. Why are you surprised? And just, like, this week, you know, this week he lied. I believe he was in Florida, and he lied and told them people that the wall has started, you know, being put up. Like, the wall has started to go up when he's lying. Like, it wasn't nothing about the wall started. It was just they put more border control fences around the border. That's all they did. And he lied in in the entire, um, I believe he was doing... Um, I think it was Florida. I really believe it was either Florida because he was in Pennsylvania last week too, but I believe it was Florida where he was. And he just flat out lied and told them people that, you know, they begun the process on building the wall. And it came out literally within less than 30 minutes of them wrapping up that conference that it was like, no, just the gates. It has just been the gates. They just put up more gates around the Border Patrol. So to just know that he's just like flat out lying, like he's just lying to the people. Like he doesn't have any remorse to the amount of lies that he puts out is just crazy. But definitely just shout out happy birthday to Barack Obama. Let's just, you know, lighten the, lighten the mood a little bit. And happy birthday yeah. to Barack Obama. Yesterday was his birthday. Uh, we need to just have a Barack Obama day. Like, you know, we have a Melina, uh, Melina Tr- day because of 4th of July. We need to have a Barack Obama day too. You think they ever gonna put that out there? I mean, yesterday was a holiday in my house. <laughs> I don't know about the rest of y'all, but um, yesterday was a holiday. It did nothing but relax. <laughs> speaking of Barack he Obama, got his <laughs> for real. And speaking of Barack Obama too, Barack Obama just did some really great things. He just endorsed um, uh, his first wave of president candidates, and he endorsed about eighty-one people. Oh. He endorsed about 81 people. It was a story that came out um, on Friday, August 2nd. He endorsed about 81 people um, in his first wave of endorsements for the 2018 midterm election. So I think that's really big that he's still out here making moves and doing things um, because we, we we really need some help. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? We really need to keep this thing going because Donald Trump is literally pushing us in a completely different direction completely different direction but i want to jump into it with the next topic that you have too as well today with tsa yes so um tsa has this program i call it the spy program i'm talking to you um it's called the quiet skies program and basically what it does is or what it is is tsa has been if you seem suspicious and by suspicious um like when you're in line, like if you, um, if they like TSA agents have a checklist, I guess they're like supposed to like use like to watch people, and it includes fidgeting, strong body odor, facial flushing, or a cold penetrating stare. Um, if someone's singing out for surveillance, then like the next flight will have the air marshal placed on them, 
and um, then, then they will be followed like while, like when they fly. So apparently there's about 40 to 50 quiet skies passengers on domestic flights every day. And um, in total, I guess it's like three to like 5,000 folks um, on the list. And honestly, it's like a waste of money. So like one, because like even like the people that are on it, like one of the people that are on it is actually a Southwest flight attendant. So like it was a regular businessman Southwest flight attendant because they felt that they were showing one of the red, one of those like random red flags. So now like they're being followed. And I mean, it's no different than like the police with the suspicious activity reports. Like SARS, like that's kind of like the same like, you know, idea behind it. And like, you know, and like the FBI just keeping a watch on people that um that they feel might be dangerous but you're singing out like certain civilians and you're like monitoring and following them all because like the way they give themselves and like some of them have like they're just regular people so i guess like some of the air marshals i don't i like, don't even agree with it because it's like we're just following regular people all because of like some of like these characteristics that are don't make any sense so what are you saying brax so if you look weird to another weird person, they can tell TSA and have weirder people follow you around the airport. So basically, like, yep, when you're going through like, a security line, like if you have like a strong body odor, if you have fidgeting, you have a cold penetrating stare, like, for example, I'm half Jamaican, so sometimes I look like I want to slap somebody when I'm just looking straight. I'm not upset. That's just the way my face looks. So, um... So basically, if, if you exhibit one of those the characteristics, you could be singled out by one of the TSA agents, and then on your next flight, they an air marshal on your next flight, kind of watching your behavior and continuously watching when you travel. So what are you saying, Brax? Like, I really, I mean, I understand what you're saying, but I really want to grasp <laughs> this concept. Like, are you saying, like, if I'm walking in the airport, because time, nine times out of ten when I walk in the airport, I am dead to the world. Like, I cannot wait to just sit down on this plane so I can go to sleep. So mm-hmm. what you're saying to me is that if I'm walking through the airport and I look weird to another weird person, they can tell another weird person to follow me around the airport now at this current time because I technically look weird to another weird person because you're weird for even that, that thinking weird that i'm weird agent. yes because you're weird for even like <laughs> saying like yo she she doesn't look right you know what i'm saying she she doesn't look like she's belong like the fact that you're paying that much attention to me in this line that's taking us both two hours to get through is a problem for me that makes you weirder than me honestly truly well yeah well it's the tsa agents that are actually like looking it shouldn't be like another passenger like letting them know but it's the fact that, like, some of the items on the checklist, like I said, like fidgeting, a strong body odor, so because you didn't put on deodorant, um, you could be, like, swagged and then be followed by the government. What do you mean fidgeting? Some people That's have like, anxiety. You're about to get on a plane. Like, how could you say, you know, something's wrong with me? I have anxiety. I'm getting on a plane. I'm nervous. I'm going up thousands of feet, thousands of feet in the air. Like, what's up? How could you say I look... Yeah. <laughs> Yo, this is crazy. Who approved who approved of this? <laughs> so, um this article, um this uh, this article it was um printed by it came out by the Boston Globe called Welcome to the Quiet Skies um on July 28th. So, I'm actually waiting to see um um also I'm like waiting to see like some like the legal briefs about it to see like the scope of it and like how legal that is because I mean like I'm pretty sure like there it is legal unfortunately. But that's just crazy that, like, like the, the way the checklist is, I can understand, like, if you have, like, more, like, distinct things on the checklist, but, like, they're telling me that because, like, I have, like, a straight face on and you feel suspicious, now you're going to have people following me. Like I said, some of the people who were on the list that are being followed, one of them was a flight attendant. So, like, you work on a plane, like, you, you already have security clearance to do this. And you're telling me that now this person is being watched by air marshals because of they exhibited one of these ridiculous traits that um, that you're supposed to be looking for. One of these red flags. Yo, Brax, so. I'm I'm still shocked because, like I said, for me, I'm always going to be fidgety walking through the airport. Why? 
One is because I have anxiety. So when I'm about to get on this plane, I'm praying that I just make it to my destination. Two is because I'm always tired walking through the airport. I'm walking on my like last, you know, my last leg, about to close my eyes as I'm walking to get through this airport. And now you're telling me that I'm about to be followed. So what if I get there and I, I, I'm aware that someone's now following me and I'm uncomfortable and now I'm going to TSA like, yo, I think somebody's following me. I think this person is, you know, uh, doing X, Y, and Z. So now does that become a confrontation? It, like, how do they handle that? That's very interesting. I, I would like to know that. <laughs> because, I mean, like, for me working in aviation, like, I kind of know how to spot, like, an air marshal. And sometimes they're not even, like, really even trying to be, like, incognito. Like, they're, they're, you can kind of tell who they are. But at the same time, too, sometimes, like, they're just, they're, like, in such plain sight. And it's so obvious that people just look right past them. That's just the funny part. Because, like, sometimes, like, they're so obvious, people just, like, look right past them. So they're just like, oh, you're just, like, a weird person. That's what I'm saying. Like, that's what I'm saying. Like, (laughs) you just want to get through the airport. Like, you're not even trying to sit over here. You know what I mean? You just want to get through. And that's what I said. People don't even get dressed. Well, my sister get dressed. Shout out to Tab Money. Tab gets dressed every time they go to the airport. You won't catch me dressed to go to no airport. Do you get dressed to go to the airport, Brock? Um, It all depends. But most of the time, yeah. Also, um, it's the nature of my work too, and then also just like like way nice when I travel because you never know who you're gonna meet, you know. I mean, you with that? That's what my sister says too. I'll be mean, like, man, I'm just trying to get where I'm going. You gotta accept me for who I am at this time. I'm about to get not to tell when you go on a flight. Like, I haven't been on those flights yet. I cannot wait to those 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 that that time when it comes when you just taking that good hour flight from you know Philly to New York, from New York to Massachusetts. Like, I cannot wait for those kind of flights. You know what I'm saying? So not to ten when I'm getting on a flight, it's two to four hours or you know four to six hours. So I am not about to sit here and have a whole outfit on on a six hour trip like i just cannot do it like do you travel often to the point where it's just like you know you are just going for an hour of time and flying right back i mean it really all depends like where i'm going like some like I, i've had a flight before that was like 43 minutes wheels up wheels down i've also been on a 13 hour flight <laughs> um it really just all depends too but sometimes you know like i said because you're never gonna meet like i'll be dressed a certain way and then, like, I'll have clothes to change into. Like, if it's, like, a longer flight, like, it really just, like, all depends on the situation. But the reason I say that, though, too, is, like I said, you never, you never know who you're going to meet. However, if it's, like, a 4 a.m., 5 a.m. flight, and it's going to be, like, a really quick flight, like, you know, like, one of, like you were saying, like, one of those, like, hour-long flights, and I know the cities I'm going in between, that's when I'm like, okay, we can do sweatpants and t-shirts <laughs> because I'm not going to see anybody. And even if I do, it's way too early for me to recognize exactly. them and then recognize me. So it doesn't exactly, matter. Exactly, man. I feel you, Brax. But I think we got a call, and let's go ahead and see if we got a call on the line. Hey, call you live on Revive. What's your name and where you calling from? All right. I guess they hung up. We took too long, Brax. But yes. So um, I definitely want to just say thank you always for coming through and supporting the Revive platform. I really, really appreciate you. But I want to hear about your opinions, too, as well, before I let you go on the I Promise School that LeBron James just recently started. How do you feel about that? I love it. Like, if I were to decide to, like, go back and, like, go into education like I was going to, I would go teach there. <laughs> Definitely. I think I think he's going to be vetting them teachers really, really hard. I mean, he has a lot of pressure on him. I mean, he's LeBron James. He's the king. So I'm sure he'll be able to, you know, um, move through the pressure and apply more pressure to the people who are applying pressure to him. But I really think he has a lot of pressure on him. So I think, like, the vetting of the teachers, the, the waiting list to get into that school is going to be crazy. And right now they're well, only starting lo- with two, two grade levels. Yeah, and I like the fact, too, that, like, because he could have gone, like, the charter school route and did that, but it's actually a public school. Yes. Like, I like that he actually sat down with the public school district, and, like, and it's actually, like, a public school. He's helping the public school system, and he's actually targeting kids, like, usually when they, like, come up with schools like this, usually for kids, like, who are more so advanced, and he's for kids who are more so, like, not, like, at the correct level they should be at, which, like, I love that even more, because, like, he's, like, trying to help students who are already struggling, Versus, like, students who might be, like, in struggling surroundings, but are not struggling academically. Like, I do like that. I do like that as well. And I like the fact that, because you, you mentioned that, yes, he could have went the charter school route, you know what I mean, and made the school um, a little bit more 
private, you know, kind of private where they would have to fill out applications and everything to go there. But it's a public school. It's going to be ran by, you know, Akron, Ohio School District, meaning that he has to follow the rules that every other public school has to follow, which I think is really big. Um, but the thing about it is, like, the funding. I just want to ask you about the funding. Do you think, like, the funding will be different? Do you think that he will fund everything that goes to the school or would the, the tax dollars from the people of Akron will fund the school? <coughs> So it'll be a little bit of both. Um, and actually, so the high school that I went to in Springfield, Massachusetts, was, when it was first started, it was called Gates Expeditionary Learning School because Bill and Melinda Gates like, founded the school and like, they put the money into it. It's a public school. And so like, we have to go by like, so like the teachers are paid by SPS. Um, like the money like to run the building like comes from SPS. However, um, like we also got additional funding, you know, like the technology, um, for textbooks, like for um, um, materials, all that stuff, because it was funded by the Gates Foundation. So, like, it'll be both. So, it's just like they're just going to be better off because they're getting all of like the standard funding that you get from, you know, like the city and the district, but they're also getting this additional funding from him as well. That's dope. That's dope. Because I really didn't understand. I was like, yo, it's a public school. So, would he be paying for it? Would the city be paying for it? Is it still tax dollar money? Because I really didn't understand that. So, thank you for breaking that down. But I just want to run off a quick list of what they will be promised at this I Promise school, which is free tuition, free uniforms, free bicycle and helmet. Shout out to the bicycles right there, right? That's really big. Free transportation within two miles, free breakfast, lunch, and snacks, uh, food pantries for families, GED, and job placement services for parents, which is really big. Um, and then also guaranteed tuition to the University of Akron for all students who graduate, which is amazing. So that means you don't even have to look outside of your state and worry about that out-of-state tuition because automatically you'll be going to the University of Akron where you can stay for one or two years, get your associates, flip that, turn into a bachelor's, turn into a master's. Like, this is a great way to really get started with your kids' education. Like, I wish my, my child, you know, my unborns <laughs> could make it into this mm-hmm. out school because this is really, really really big like really really big and i just think that you know more people should follow in his footsteps yo brax you about to follow in his footsteps sooner than later sooner hopefully (laughs) rather than later like i said there's a lot of things happening right now okay okay just make sure that revive knows exactly what's happening because we want to (laughs) support you all the way through brax definitely man go ahead and shout out tls let the people know how they can find you um when are you guys coming back can i can i ask that question or you're not sure yet Yes, you can. Um, we are coming back by the end of the month. I will have a date for you the next time I am on here, okay. which will be on what is it, Sunday, August 19th. Okay, the 19th. Definitely. I'm going to be holding you to that one. I'm definitely going to be holding you to that. So definitely shout them so, out how they um, can stay locked. Yeah, so you can find us um, on Facebook, Instagram, and LS Politics. Um, you can also check out our questions of the day that will be coming back soon along with um, we are going to be adding a podcast yes. on to TLS as well. Yes, big, man. Talk heavy, Brax. I'm with it, man. I cannot wait to see what you guys come in through with because y'all got some big, big heavy hitters over there, man. Between you and Keith, y'all got a lot of things coming down the pipeline. So I know y'all going to be doing some really big things. Yeah, I definitely got the support revive radio, man. I appreciate you always coming through and supporting us, Brax. Of course. Thank you for having me. No doubt. Have a great rest of your week. That wraps up what's buzzing, man. Here on Revive every second and fourth Sunday of the month with your boy Brax from TLS Politics, man. Make sure you guys follow them Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at TLS Politics underscore, man. Definitely check them out. You can find them on our Insta Snap right now. We are recapping some of these interview questions, some of these interview answers. Also, with the What's Buzzing segment, too, we're recapping. You can find that on our Instagram Snap. Is that how you say it? Or Snap Insta? I don't know how I say it, man. Just go to Instagram and check out the Snap, man. You can follow that at Revive underscore POC. Don't forget to give us a call, man. If you are on the line, we are coming to you, man. Don't be scared. Speak up. Speak out. 215-490-9832. We about to go to a quick commercial break. Right after this quick commercial break, man, we'll be up with our next guest. I'm really excited to be speaking with her art, the art of ascending, man. It's going to be a really big one, man. Stay locked to us here at Revive Radio. You already know what time it is. Save the date. Save the date. Save the date. Save September 8th, man, it's Revive Day. Revive Rhythm and Reason Volume 2 2, 2 3. I'm sorry, we moving, baby. 2 3, hitting Philadelphia streets, man. <laughs>
entrepreneur? Are you a startup business? Are you a local business? Are you an artist? Are you looking for someone to distribute your content? Revive Radio is the place to be. Come advertise with us at Revive Radio right now. You can find that advertising page at reviveisalive.com. Once again, reviveisalive.com. Advertise with Revive. We are reaching thousands of millennials all across the world. And once again, reviveisalive.com is where you can find that information. You are listening to Time For an Awakening Media, part of the Black Talk Radio Network. For podcasts or live programming, hit them up at timeforanawakening.com. Hey, did y'all see the stuff I posted on my wall? No, nah, it didn't even show up in my news feed. Man, I'm done with social media. All the injustice and brutality going around, and it's like they're trying to suppress our voice. We're trying to get the message out there, and you can't even share empowerment and what's going on around the country either. Mm-mm. Nah, don't be dumb with social media, though. It's a tool, and there is a place where we have a voice. It's a Let's Buy Black 365 social network. You do anything you want on any other social network. Post pictures, videos, status updates, share resources and community news. But on Let's Buy Black 365, it's a platform for us and by us to tell our messages. Whoa, that's like a digital underground railroad. What's the name of that site again? It's Let's Buy Black 365.com. Yeah, I heard about that. It's all about networking, and you get points, right? Yeah, the more you network. Network, post, and share the more points you get. Plus, you get points for posting pictures, sharing information, attending community events, and inviting others to network with you on the app. Wow, that's all I need to know. I'm going to go download that app right now. Now, better yet, let me invite you so I can get some points. It's all about empowerment and solutions, y'all. Yeah, that's what's up. I'm all in. Let's do it. Let's share our stories. <laughs> time it is man it's me your girl plc host of revive radio man i need y'all to turn y'all radios up and stay locked with us here at revive radio man each and every sunday with that good sunday morning talk radio from 11 a.m to 1 p.m man we are reviving your airways don't forget to give us a call 215-490-9832 once again that number is 215-490-9832 and definitely subscribe 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 to our revive youtube channel as well as our revive newsletter if you go to revive is alive.com it's gonna pop right up at you you don't even have to go find it it's gonna come directly to you man subscribe tell a friend to tell a friend and subscribe themselves as well man definitely spread the word spread the message revive is alive and don't forget man keep revive alive all you have to do is donate one dollar to the revive 365 campaign and you can do that at the bottom of our website if you go to revive is alive.com at the bottom of the home page the revive 365 campaign is sitting right there man definitely go ahead and donate 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 to keep revive alive each and every day don't forget to do that spread the word spread the message support revive radio man we about to go ahead and go into with our next guest about to get into it with our next guest our second guest here today on revive radio uh, the art of ascending you're live on revive how are you i'm fine how are you i'm great i'm great i'm excited to be speaking with you today man i'm really excited that we have you on revive radio if you can go ahead and introduce yourself let the people know exactly who we're speaking with so I'm Courtney Gardner. I'm the owner, author, and success coach of The Art of Ascending. Um, it's a professional coaching practice where I work with individuals and young entrepreneurs and helping them to focus, plan, and reach their desired level of success. No doubt. Yo, coach, put me in the game. Courtney, what's up? How could I get in the game? <laughs> when it comes to... What do you mean? What I'm saying, like, when you come to coaching, like, what's up? How can I get in the game? How can I get that good life professional coaching going? Because I heard some really good things about what you're doing. So how did you guys actually get started? So this actually, my um, coaching practice came to be about two years ago. Um, I'm a social worker full time and um, I was really taking a a break from life, right? (laughs) And so um, I went on vacation and I was trying to figure out how can I move on with the next step of my life. And I really love servicing uh, other people. You know, that's my passion is helping people get unstuck, helping them get where they want to be. But I wanted to do it in a capacity where it wasn't so draining. And coaching is kind of like the flip side of social work, where I'm no longer working with people who are in crisis, but people who are motivated and inspired, you know, to move forward with their lives. 
no so doubt. that's how it came to be about. I heard that social work, like you should never get a degree in social work because it's going to be so hard <laughs> to find, you know, some kind of job or get the money that you're looking for, you know, with being a social worker. Uh, do you agree or disagree? I agree 100%. You definitely have to have a passion for it. It can never be about the money. Um, yeah, no, not ever. <laughs> so It can't ever be about the money. But we, I love social work. I love what I do, but I had to balance it out. And Because if you don't balance it out, you'll you'll become drained. Uh, it's one of the uh, fields where, you know, um, the burnout rate is extremely high. Why? Why do you find, why, why would you say that the burnout rate is extremely high? Oh, uh, well, because, well, as a social worker, you're working with, people who are in a crisis and they're looking to you to solve their problems without any input from them. You know what I mean? Um, not all the time, but most of the time. Well, Ms. Courtney, what do you want to do? Well, this is your life. What do you want to do? You know, <laughs> and I'm holding them accountable is a little bit harder when uh, you're in the field of social work. It's providing resources, but once you provide the resources, you got to motivate them to utilize the resources. So that's why. And you take a lot of it home with you. It's genetic. I try to let my nine to five be my nine to five and leave it where it is. That's a fact. No one ever wants to take that nine to five home because it ain't making no money no. at home at all. Right? <laughs> I agree with nope. you on that. So when it comes to like, you know, the different people that you interacted with while you were a social worker, well, you still are a social worker. So as you're interacting with people, um, would you say it's harder to deal with youth or is it harder to deal with adults? You know what? I work um, with mental, I work in mental and behavioral health, right? And it's for youth um, ages about five to 21. And a lot of the times it's not the youth, it's the parents. Um, the youth could be motivated or they're easily motivated. But um, a lot of the times it's the parents, uh, lack of parenting skills or lack of know-how, um, they're the hardest. Um, they think, you know, their way is the right way. Um, if you give them something different, they're kind of... They, they, you know, standoffish. Oh, okay, here you come with your degree. What do you know? Okay. But if you try something different, you know, they, they're not open to changing much of anything because that's the way they were brought up. So I would say the adults. Because they, because they feel like they know what their child knows best already, or they know, you know what I mean, what they their child needs in their opinion. They feel like they know, but they wouldn't be there if they knew, right? Exactly, <laughs> exactly. Or you know, there's oh, this child has an attitude, not knowing that the child has the same attitude that you had. Exactly. Or you know, a lot of times, you know, when you're, you got a teenager, oh, or every time she opens her mouth, she has an attitude. Well, she's mimicking your attitude. She has your attitude. She's responding in the way that you respond. A lot of kids are being taught that instead of talk to and then when you tell the parent that you know it's well my child's not gonna run me but it's about respect and we have to respect these young uh young people and we got to show put out the respect that we want back but parents they don't see it that way always that's that's a fact i love how you're saying you know uh they are mimicking what they see they definitely are mimicking what they see because uh, especially when it comes to the social media and a lot of things when it comes to parents these days um and I, I, eventually I want to become a parent you know these days too right <laughs> but, <laughs> I, I, I love, we have a lot to 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 really try to block out or distract our kids from um such as social media TV uh-huh. technology you know the environment that they that they live in school like it's not it's not it's not you know just the normal go to school uh make sure you keep your friends intact make sure you keep your friends close to now they got they can have friends from all the way in Hawaii and Russia and exactly. Canada because of social media so it's really hard to keep up what your kids are doing so when it comes to mimicking that is like a true statement because if you think about social media the whole definition definition of it is to gain followers you know what I'm saying followers, mm-hmm. followers followers and that's what these kids are becoming more and more followers instead of leaders so I definitely agree with exactly. you on that one. definitely agree with you on that one but when it comes to social work right um, I just really wanted mm-hmm. to ask this question do you see it be becoming more diverse do you see it becoming more diverse do you see a lot of different ethnic ethnicities in um you know in the social work field um or do you still see a lot of African-American women um being social workers Oh, uh, you know what? So my office that I work at is, is really diverse. Um, we have men, we have women, white, black, Asian, Filipino. We have, it's, it's really diverse. It's really diverse. So even when um, it comes to like the patients that you know you as a social worker will work with, would you say is diverse too? Our clients, yep. I have white, black, Asian. Uh, yeah, like I, Muslim. I have a, a array of different clients. Yep. Is, is really diverse. It's, you know what? When it comes to behavior and mental health, uh, is is no color that that it you know clings to. Is is you know what I mean? The color doesn't 
pre describe that person. You know what I mean? I'm glad uh, I'm glad that you said that because a lot of people feel like um a, a lot of people who deal with social workers or have circ- social workers or case workers, whatever you want to call them, they're coming from urban neighborhoods or they're coming from, you know, <laughs> air quote the ghetto, different things like that. Or they're coming from I mean, I've who, been in mansions. I've been in mansions. <laughs> I've worked with rich people. I worked with uh people whose parents were lawyers and uh psychiatrists, you know. Um mental health in those it's it for everybody no color. I guess. About, nobody I get, from you I can't get, hide from it i get you it sees no color and i wanted to make that Mm-mm. clear because a lot of people get misconstrued or mistaken by that because they feel like you know something has to happen to you you have to have some kind of ptsd in order for you to be no. going through these these troubles mm-hmm. or these traumas and i'm like no it can happen to any and everybody so i appreciate you saying that so but when it oh, comes to the art of ascending how does mm-hmm. art how does art play play a part in your life skill coaching and in your um professional coaching you said how does art okay i think people get that so ascending means to rise right to grow to move upward so it's the art of moving upward and um i feel like i have the key you know and in a way it is an art i put it in my book um is certain steps that i use to uh move you from where you are to where you want to be um you know you you can say you want a certain thing you can envision it but if you don't act on it, then it's not going to happen. So um, with my book, it's called The Art of Ascending, Success Coaching, uh, Goal Setting, Frank Talking More. Uh, With that, it it walks you through the process. And that's the art of it, is the process. Um, People, a lot of my clients, they are, not that they're not motivated, they really don't know where to start. Some of them are stuck. Um, It could be with losing weight. It could be starting school. It could be making the next move in their career. Um, They're stuck. They really don't know where they where to start it's not that they don't believe in themselves it's not that they don't have the motivation is is about their plan and what they can do now you know what i mean so that's the art behind it so when you think of the word stuck right do you think Mm -hmm. that every person has to come to a point in time in life where they are stuck in order to really figure out what they want to do um people i think it's different for everybody um don't people might really know what they want to do, but they might not have a clear idea how to get there. Um, some people might really have to hit rock bottom before they want more, you know? Um, and so it, it, it depends on the individual. Somebody could get stuck in their nine to five. This might've been what they wanted to do, but they probably didn't plan on being, you know, entry level forever. They probably wanted to move up or, you know, thought about it, but didn't know how. And when it comes to like motivation and it comes to inspiration, how does the art of ascending actually help people get unstuck? So we talk, it's a, it's a list of things that we do, um, but every every goal or every plan is individualized. And so I sit and I talk to you about what the big picture, you know, if you can explain to me what your big picture is, we can create steps small enough that we can do today to get you there. And um, uh. I'm sorry, I forgot the question. No, when it comes, like, how do you guys help people to get unstuck? Oh, goal setting. Goal setting, um, hold you accountable to do what you said that you were going to do. Um, follow through. And um, inspiring you to believe in yourself. And also is your support group. So it's, it's, I'm going to force you to look at who you have uh, in your circle, who you're surrounded with. You know, I'm going to force you to do what you're afraid to do. Because that might be the roadblock or the barrier that's in your way. Um, when you're getting coaching, uh, for me, you are going to have to take a real long look in the mirror. You're going to have to be honest with yourself. And honestly, you are the expert of your life. You know what I mean? I'm just going to hold you accountable to it. That's a fact. That's a fact. And so people like so people been using this word accountability, accountability, accountability. When you think of mm-hmm. accountability, especially by you being a life coach, when you think of accountability for self and then others holding you accountable, how do you describe that? Oh, so me, I have a, a thing. So, all right, if I say I'm going to do something, everybody knows um, I'm an honest person. And if I say I'm going to do it, no matter what it is, you're going to believe it. Once you know who I am, right, you, you're going to believe it. But what I do to hold myself accountable is I tell others that I know are going to hold me accountable. Yo, for how is that whatever coming along? Where I might post it on social media, you know, because you can't lie to the world, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Well, you some can't people lie do. to the world and people are watching so some people be putting, that's how I hold myself accountable okay? I was about to say some people be on Instagram flexing you know some people no. be, uh, you know what I'm saying <laughs> some people be on Instagram flexing 
but I agree with you. No, people know you in real life. You know what I mean? So, so when it comes to when it comes to you know what I'm saying, getting people out of that unstuckness, though. So I know you say you guys have a, a long list of things. What is one thing that you have done so far, and you have received a, a hell of a testimony from it? As for, oh, well, I was working with, it was a, a business client, and she had a vision. She, we, we created a plan. It was um, things that she could do now. You know what I mean? The end, she had the vision of what the end was going to look like, and we had to break it down into things that she could do now. And it's not only on the goal, the business goal, but it's also uh, how you can, you know, manage your life and your business and your, you know what I mean? All the other things in life, we have to make room for it so that you can, maneuver through it comfortably and so that she don't feel so weighed down so um after we did that she was she was good to go and uh she she got back to me and she was like Courtney like you really changed my world and the things started happening and so there's small wins that's leading up to the big win but after we got her her um her direction I want to call them you know she could see herself following through and she started to follow through and she's close to being where she wants to be at I love when you said small wins because a lot of people don't pay attention to the small wins. Like I feel as though like the little things add up to the bigger things. If you get mm-hmm. every little thing done, it's going to, it's going to be so much easier when you get to that bigger thing. And that you're not even going to think that the bigger thing was the win because you did all of the little things. You're like, yo, I really did that. I really did that. You know what I mean? And that actually is the key to get, even getting where you're going. So when it comes yeah, the to stepping stone. No, and I was going to ask you that when it comes to the, to to little wins, um, like how how do you help your clients understand or observe that these little wins have helped them, or just observe what a little win is because they don't. Some people don't even acknowledge it or even notice it. Okay, so we have like it'll be like a list of three things, three goals that we want to accomplish, right? And then each goal is broken down into tasks, right? And we have a due date that that goal is going to get done, right? And here's the thing: a lot of times people can't see it broken down or they can't see, you know, this is how you get to the big thing. So um, once they get, let's say, uh, somebody starting a, a business, right? So they get their checklist from me, um, you know, that reads up on uh, what business entities are, you know, and they pick their their business entity and then they, you know, file. And once they get their EIN number and once they get their email address and they get the website, then they're kind of halfway on the way, right? Or once they form form their, their, their mission and vision. And that's small things that they didn't or couldn't do prior to creating this plan. And now they're halfway there. So it's those things. And when it's the, when I'm calling and I'm checking in on this due date and they can run off, you know, you get proud of it. Yeah, it's done. I did it. I'm on my way there. So it's that. We acknowledge it. We got a due date and I'm holding you accountable for it. So and how important- you can't overlook it. And that's, and that's a fact. And how important would you say um, having a life coach or, um, you know, someone to be there, a mentor, or some kind of inspiration it is while you're going through entrepreneurship, how important would you say it is for someone who's going through entrepreneurship? I think it's very important um, because a lot of times family and friends, they just don't get it. Um, and, you know, you you want to need support and you're going to look to your family and they really not with it because some people can't see you in a position outside of whatever their perception is exactly. for you. You know what I mean? You gotta and say so that again. It's, it's very important. I was going to say, Courtney, you got to say that again because, you know what I'm saying, they they still think, you know what I'm saying, we the same ones from college and high school. I'm like, yep. no, I done stepped into my, I put my crown on, baby, please, can you watch Exactly, I've touch. grown. I am not <laughs> who I was then. Yes, man. And a lot of people don't see that, especially when you're stepping into, like, these boss roles and you're stepping into positions where other people outside of your family see you, you know, as, you know, a great person or other people outside of your mm-hmm. family or friends, you know what I mean? Even friends sometimes don't, don't um, uh-huh. catch, catch up to where you are just as quick and, and sometimes like for me I stopped playing catch up like I, I stopped you know um, wanting to, to, to keep up with my friends I stopped wanting to you will kill yourself and, trying to exactly. keep up you can't keep up with nobody but the person in the mirror exactly exactly so are you would you say you're like a motivational speaker too as well like as you're coaching would you say you, you have a little bit of speaker inside of you um, I think that is something for the future, but let me tell you right now, um, I get nervous. I always um find myself in those roles and I hate it every single time. <laughs> I can um inspire a person one on one, I can inspire a group of five. Uh but speaking to a room that's still something that um I struggle with. I don't know why, but um 
I don't know. I get nervous about it. You can't Maybe tell. one day. Courtney, you can't tell right now. You're flowing right now, man. You just got to flow with it. I guess it's because I'm talking about something I really care about. But when I, that's one of my fears. I promise you it's one of my fears. And um, I have, talking about, you know, your, your circle and your friends, Um, I have Adam McNeil. He's a really great friend of mine. And, you know, I told him that um, I'm afraid of public speaking, right? And when I tell you every time, yo, Kurt, I need a favor. I'm very account like you can hold me accountable. I'm always going to do what I say I'm going to do. So what's your favor? If I can help you, I will. Hey, I got this anger management group. Man, how do I say no when I said I was available? So I have to follow up. I have to show up, right? So that's how he gets me out there and involved. But um, yeah, I still get nervous about it. That's love that you have someone to hold you accountable. You know what I mean? Because a mm-hmm. lot of people, you know, when they get where they're going and they, they start to hold other people accountable, they don't necessarily have people to hold them accountable. So that's really big exactly. that you still have someone in your circle who, you know, checks up on you and, and makes sure that you're getting done what you're supposed to be getting done, too. Um, and you also do some, you do events, too, as well. What kind of events do you guys do? So, yes, I love collaborating with um, other people um, or like-minded people. So um, I have this thing called Self-Care Sunday, and I collaborate with my friend. Uh, she's also a life coach. Her name is Jennifer Gray. Um, Self-Care Sunday sessions is basically me giving you what I do on my Sundays. Sundays is a time for me to relax, you know, and just let go. So um, I do uh, yoga. I might meditate. I might burn some sage incense. I might, you know, meditate stage. with my crystals. And this is what I'm bringing to you. But we do it with uh, a different yoga instructor. Uh, most of the times it's African-American. is an African-American yoga instructor. And it's very important that um, I say that because I feel like as African-Americans, we don't uh, do enough self-care. We don't do enough. Uh, we always taking care of somebody else. You know what I mean? And we don't ever pour into ourselves. So that's what um, – Self-care Sundays, and we do a professional development. I also have a, another, um, I'm the vice president, it's called Sister Talk, right? And it's a women's empowerment uh, group, and it's in Philadelphia, it's brand new, but every month we're holding workshops, women empowerment workshops. I'm with you on that, and how can people find more information about Sister Talk? So they can find it on um, Instagram, there's a link, and it has links to all of the events, but it's double underscore sister, S-I-S-T-A. T A L K and double underscore. Okay, I'm with that. I'm definitely, man, please invite me to some of these spaces. Um, I know you're not too far from me. I'm in Philadelphia myself, so please invite me to some of these spaces, some, some of that self-care Sunday. I'm trying to burn some sage with you, you know what I'm saying, get my crystals popping, my Yanni sting, yes, all that. <laughs> <laughs> so please get me right. You know what I'm saying? I would love to collab and network and definitely stay connected with you, man, because you're really doing some big things. So I would love to definitely connect and stay uh, connected with you. Okay, awesome. No problem. So please, I want to tag you right now. <laughs> no doubt. Please tag me. And um, before I let you go, please shout out um, everything that you just dropped. Could you just drop some gems? So let people know how they can stay connected to Sister Talk, everything you have going on with your organization and your program, and definitely how they can get involved in that self-care Sunday. Because a lot of us need to get out the house on Sunday. A lot of us think, you know, staying in the house and cleaning up and things like that is a great way to start your week. Hell no. Go get some personal no, time. No, not get at all. Out. <laughs> yes. Get out and do what you got to do. So we need some people in this, these yoga sessions right now so let the people know how they can stay connected so y'all go on uh the art of ascending.com or um on instagram at the art of ascending y'all find everything you'll need to be able to find um also i take this to talk in one of my uh posts so you'll be able to link with them it's free uh workshops too awesome the self-care sunday is not free but it's affordable and invest in yourself Please invest in yourself. I love how you ended with that one, man. Definitely invest in yourself because if you're trying to get anywhere, you definitely have to put some money up, and it's, and it's for you. It's for you. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. The same way you spend that on them, them tennis shoes and that bag <laughs> is the same way you can spend it on your self-care, man. We definitely need to, you know, get a holistic approach of life, man. We got to definitely take a holistic approach to life now because there's a lot of things going on, man. But definitely, Courtney, I appreciate you coming through, supporting the Revive platform. Let's stay connected. And please invite me somewhere, man, because I'm trying to get, try get rid of that, that, that sage, man. I'm trying and get with it. I'm doing it right now. <laughs> <laughs> All right, man. Enjoy the rest of the week. All right. Thank you. You as well. No doubt. That will wraps up another great interview here on Revive Radio, The mm-hmm. Art of Ascending, man. Make sure you guys check them out. Check out their website and definitely their social media. Definitely check them out for Self Care Sunday, man. I'm trying to get that popping. She said they burning sage. I'm trying to get all that negativity away from me, man. We trying to keep Revive alive, man, and we need your help to do that. I just want to say thank you to everybody who's listening and supporting Revive Radio each and every week, man. Revive is alive. You can check us out at reviveisalive.com. Once again, save the date. Save the date. September 8th. September 8th is going down. 
down in these Philadelphia streets, man. Revive is alive. Revive Risen and Reason is Volume 2 dash three is going down man once again i do apologize we were supposed to be going strong for the next six months but it's for a reason you guys we're putting everything together in this one huge project this one huge event we're looking for sponsors we're looking for vendors we're looking for food trucks man hit us up right now at revive.poc at gmail.com the flyer for the event will be dropping tonight so definitely stay locked to our timeline at revive underscore poc don't forget to call in each and every time we revive your airways 215-490-9832 subscribe 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 to that youtube channel and also that newsletter man the newsletter is going to be coming out this week as well and don't forget man we just dropped a new blog on revivalsalive.com by your girl harmony the goddess when it comes to i am my diary i was hosting that amazing event i am my diary last sunday man check out the blog right now on on reviveisalive.com. It's me, your girl POC. We be back next Wednesday for the Winning Wednesday edition with your girl Tab Money. Turn your radios up. Yep, yep, you know what time it is, man. It's Meet Your Girl PLC, host of Revive. Today is Winning Wednesday, so you already know each and every Winning Wednesday. We have a jam-packed show for you guys here on Time for the Wake. And I need you guys to give us a call right now, 215-490-9832. Once again, that number is 215-490-9832. And you already know, reviveislive.com. Once again, reviveislive.com is the place for you to be. Click that link in my bio, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at revive underscore POC. I believe in money power.